Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will talk about Microsoft. And if you are stuck in the Microsoft ecosystem, then I'm very sorry for you. But we know that over 50% of our busy professionals are actually in this situation. And it is not as bad as you might think and as you are probably suffering from every day. I was working over eight years in big corporate, working with Microsoft and even in combination with Google Workspace and nothing was defined. So there was communication all over the place and things like that. This is what we will talk about today, how you actually can use all the tools of Microsoft in order to make a highly productive system. And we did this already with our Inner Circle members. We have our Inner Circle coaching program where we dive deeper into the specific setups. And that was exactly the situation. She was stuck in the Microsoft ecosystem. They were using Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Jet, Planner and all this. And she was devastated. She thought we have to get ClickUp or things like that, but our company doesn't allow it she didn't need it by just simply defining what type of information goes where this was already increasing the productivity big time and this is exactly what we would dive into today so without further ado let's dive in paperless movement your productivity your way all right here we go this is microsoft and these are the different tools that we have here there's the calendar we have the chat we have the onedrive we have the outlook the planner microsoft teams and microsoft loop and this is already where the mess begins because all these tools have some features that are overlapping. It would be so much easier if Microsoft really dedicates specific feature set to the different tools so you know exactly in what tool you are and what things you are supposed to do in these tools. But by providing, it starts with Teams and Chat and then even, let's go, well, it becomes even worse if you bring in Skype, right? So we know that companies are even using Skype in combination, just by these three, you already have three communication platforms. How are you supposed to know where to write to a person? Well, usually you're using the tool where you get the most attention. So that's what we realized that the chat is something people leverage the most in order to get access to a person. And this is a lack of rules. I made a video about team communication and how it's killing productivity. So if you're interested about this in more detail, then have a look in the description below. In this video, I talk about the three things that kill the team communication. One is the lack of threats. So people are not using threats in order to make conversations. They're just having a chat conversation. And then the lack of rules and the lack of a single source of truth. And all this is something that we will talk about in this video as well. So if you want to get more context, feel free to watch the other video before that video or afterwards so you get the overall understanding. But now thinking about using threats. So if you don't know what threats are, well, you just have to look in chat because it doesn't provide threats. In chat, you write about how is your dog? And the answer is, I need uh, information about project A. And then you say, great, here's the information about project A. And then the reply is, my dog is fine. And then the next thing is about project B. That's where you scatter replies to a specific context. By threads, you would say, how is your dog? And then this person can reply on this message, my dog is fine, even later on. And then having another text. Let's not go too deep into this again. It, I go into detail in the other video about this. But the fact that chats lack threads to us at the Payless Movement, according to Ico, kills the whole tool, especially as there is another tool that is much more powerful than the chats, Teams. So if you focus on Teams for communication, this makes it really asynchronous. Chats, email, all these things should be considered always an asynchronous communication. You should never write, are you there? What do you expect to immediately get a reply? Yes, I am there. And now what? The thing is, these communication tools should be a place where you add relevant information in context to whatever it is, usually to an action item. The question is even makes, does it make sense to have an external communication tool when you could actually add the relevant information to the action item? And this is where the planner comes into play, although the planner is really basic again when it comes to all this communication. So there's a disconnection. The other thing that we could do 
is, well, forget about Skype, because again, it's something like the chat. So in my opinion, if possible, and that's another problem that we have, right? We cannot change the others around you. So we cannot just say, well, let's stop communication here. But what you can do, you can set up the rules for yourself. So if you say, well, if you need any update about something, then please write it into Teams into the specific place and you will get an answer within 24 hours. The same I did in a big corporate with 300,000 employees globally with multiple teams from different sites, different types of work. I was still able to set in the rules by just adding a footer in each email where I showed the rules. I will reply within 24 hours. There is no urgent email. Well, all the rules that I described in the other video as well. And therefore people get used to it. Obviously you have to stick to your own rules. So if people learn that they actually get a reply within 24 hours, they calm down. They now think about what is actually, is it really urgent? Because urgent is really business interruption. Something is so important. If you don't act now, business is in danger. Or maybe there's an important client sitting in a meeting and they need an update in order to close the deal. These are urgent things, but everything else, no. And there's still the phone. So the phone is really the last instance. If it is really urgent and they need immediate feedback, then call. That's the thing. So, in my opinion, these two should get killed. Don't use them at all if possible and try to move things into these tools here. Outlook, email communication, again, too many times we see communication happening via email related to project updates, related to action items, what people need to do. All this makes it a big mess because you have a feed of emails. You may miss an email with the hundreds of emails that you get on a daily basis. And then trying to find this and figure out, is it actually the latest email? Did I actually accidentally archive another one? Did I already reply to this? And the persons who need to bring all the emails to get my... Oh. It is reminding me too much of my corporate work that I had there. And I was so happy in the end of this, where I became a business analyst and leading two teams in IT to roll out the ICO methodology, the early version of it, and improve team performance by 60% just by some simple rules within the team, creating a single source of truth, where to access information, where to place information, all these things. This is insane. The increase of productivity that you can achieve by just doing that. And there's also a study showing that still people are doing 60% on their workday, doing work about work, searching for information, asking for information, interrupting other people being in deep work to ask for information to do their own work. I remember the times when I was working more for others than I was working on my own because I was trying to help everybody and things like that. All this can be killed if the communication rules are clear. Okay, so asynchronous communication. So why, what, what should we use email for? Well, email is external communication. You talk to your clients, suppliers, uh, maybe even consultants who are not allowed to work inside teams, things like that, that you cannot work, go around. Also, you have maybe your newsletters that you are researching, research papers. All these things are email, but everything else, there should be a project management system and a business knowledge management system where you have the information flowing. And Microsoft Loop isn't doing any good here either. They thought they now finally built a hub where everything comes together. And that's where I thought it becomes very powerful. If we now have one single source of truth that consolidates all the information, but right now, as far I tested it, it's too cumbersome to do that. So instead of trying to bring everything together, I would also ignore this. Go into the comments below if you have a specific use case for Microsoft Loop where you actually bring things together or actually send out it because you can do it both ways, right? You can have something in Loop that you then bring back to uh, Teams and you can show it up in this. What we ended up with this client is trying to reduce communication via chat as much as possible. Try to focus and double down on Teams because they already had their project set up in Teams. So therefore you have one channel 
for the project. Teams allows you to have a pinned post where you have all the information relevant to the project. Perfect. You have a knowledge management, a single source of truth for the information about a specific project. Then you can have the communication about the project in this place. So everything is in one place. So whenever people need to look something up related to a specific project, they need to go to Teams and find it. The worst thing is there's not only direct communication, there's also groups. So people group people together and then start talking about specific things and mixing up the different contexts. And whenever you need to look up information later on, you have to go through the wall of text, finding the different pieces and then bring everything together in a maybe even a Microsoft Word document in order to get on top of this. And this is what you then send out via email for everybody else. So they get on top of their gaming and no. No, no, no. There are better ways to do that for sure. So the calendar, well, there's not much to say about that. Calendar should never contain tasks. In our opinion, you cannot plan out 15 minute tasks on a calendar. It's nonsense as a busy professional, as the whole day is changing so quickly that you will never be able to stick to your schedule that you do for time blocking. If you need to do time blocking so nobody else can send you any meeting invites, then block a whole block, right? If you do deep work in the morning, block three hours and then work on your deep work. If you're not sure what your deep work is and what your shallow work is, there are other videos on the channel and in iCore we perfectly explain this, the differentiation between shallow work and deep work and how you can split these and do batching of your tasks and things like that. So all this is something where you just need to have big blocks on your calendar instead of having these tiny task things that you will never be able to stick to and then just in the evening being devastated that you didn't get to what you actually wanted to work on. Well, OneDrive and there's also SharePoint, right? Again, something where people really get confused. SharePoint is a combination of storing files and documents and having kind of communication there as well and all these things. And SharePoint is something that I leveraged in Big Corporate to build up a ticketing system. So the, the filling lines we've been working with and the QA and everybody had a single source of truth. That was the solution where we were able to increase team performance by 60% with the same headcount. Why am I able to say that? Because we finally got proper KPIs. I keep saying KPIs like watermelons on the outside green and the inside red. People always try to get the good numbers looking, you know, whenever you the meetings but if you look under the hood usually they're all red and their people are struggling and these were real numbers that we got there because everything was defined in the system and therefore we were able to show that we really increased team performance by 60 percent and it became the single source of truth for so many different departments all looking into the same type of information and the 60 percent increase was especially due to the drop of communication needed in order to get an update. Every day QA come in and ask, what is the status of this? Do you have this document? Do you have this? Everything was in SharePoint in one place for them to find. And this was the key understanding here. This is where you really have, where you can combine things together and to build systems. This is where you really store your documents. This means if you have project set up in Teams and you have your pinned note, you can store the documents, for example, on OneDrive and then just add the link here in order to have it in the final destination. Or here, SharePoint, if, if your IT team says, no, 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 we have to store all the documents on SharePoint, well, do it, but use the link and add it here so people know one place to go to to find everything else. And now let's go to action because we kept talking about knowledge and in i we always move information to action. And that's where the planner comes into play. There's where you plan out the tasks for the project. So in order to achieve this, the only way in Microsoft is really that you replicate the structure that you have on Teams. So you have in Teams the projects and you have in Planner the same projects. And therefore here you define, you have the knowledge for about these projects. And here you have the action about the projects. And if there is any discussion going on, you can reference back. You have a discussion going on and say, what about this and this task? Okay, and then you link this task from planner in here. So people have one click jump to this, but you can also embed and many more things that you can do. This is just an explanation on high level how we can leverage the actual Microsoft tools 
and better streamline the work in the Microsoft ecosystem. If you're really interested more on how this looks in action in the different tools, let me know in the comments below and I can make more videos about, you know, show you how to set these things up in Teams, in Planner and so on and how these things work together if this is something you're interested in. But if you're really struggling with your system and a new ecosystem because it's so widely different from one company to another, how they use the Microsoft systems, well, then I highly encourage you to join our Inner Circle program where Paco and I personally help you in the coaching sessions to figure out your current setup and to optimize the setup, no matter if you cannot change the people around you. Because what we know is when you change yourself and you adapt to your current current situation with a perfect understanding where the problem is and how to solve it, other people around you will automatically start asking, how do you do this? And they will adapt to this as well, because just the communication rules alone will also help the others to get a more calm work day going. This is just something that we see over and over again. And this relief within the team and the whole company, this is just amazing. And as we say, we are here helping you with i to maximize your productivity system, no matter the tools you use. So if you like the video, share it with your colleagues and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so I can catch you up next time.